Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the Combat Corner Cream TJ1 Japanese inspired boxing gloves. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here. Today I'm doing a review on the Combat Corner Cream TJ1 Japanese inspired boxing gloves. They come in this all white colorway with black print. I got mine in 16 ounces. They're also available in 12 ounces and are a lace-up only model. They're made of full genuine cowhide leather throughout the entire glove and utilizes a layered latex foam over the knuckle area that is medium in density and the gloves are handmade and manufactured in Thailand. Now this is going to be Combat Corner's first venture into making essentially a winning clone or a Japanese inspired boxing glove, however you want to call it. And to be frank, I think they've done an awesome job. There's a lot that's very similar to the winnings and there's a couple small key differences, but nothing too glaring in that regard. Um, the one thing that really st stands out to me in terms of similarities is the sizing. So if you have a pair of 16 ounce winnings at home, these essentially are pretty much the same size as those. And I think I, my best guess is they probably got a, a pair of authentic winnings and they use that as their template to make this glove, not a bad idea. And the other thing that really stands out to me is that these gloves are made in Thailand. Now, if you've ever watched any of my other previous reviews on Thai made gloves, I've always been a big fan of Thai gloves, mainly because you, they're just a great bang for a buck. They're very underrated. You get great value from a Thai glove. The craftsmanship's are usually always there. The, the leather's always quality. The stitching on Thai gloves are always awesome. And you can get them for a great price. So when it comes to value, Thai gloves are really hard to beat. So you kind of, kind of combine all those factors, the fact that these are made in Thailand, um, I also love Combat Corner equipment. I've done a review on a couple of their products back in the day, and I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with Combat Corner gloves. So generally speaking, I've always had a positive experience with Combat Corner. So, you know, combine all those things, and that's what really want, made me want to review these gloves on top of them being another winning clone. Now, there's a lot of other companies that have the, done their Japanese-inspired gloves, which I've reviewed before. So anytime a company comes out with a winning, you know, winning clone, I usually like to get them just to see how they do, you know, because winning is, is kind of like the benchmark. A lot of people use winning as the benchmark and what they use to measure uh, a good boxing glove. And um, obviously a lot of pros and even amateurs use winnings. So that's how it's been over the years. Uh, now with this glove, when you're looking at it from a design standpoint, this is a 16 ounce version. This is perfect for everything in the gym, sparring, hitting the bag, mitt work, whatever it may be. The 12 ounce version is gonna be smaller. It's gonna be more compact. That's more for bag work doing the mitts, uh, more precision and speed work, not for sparring. So just depending on your personal needs, that's what I would go with. But I would foresee more people going with the 16 just because it's a little bit more versatile and what you can use it for in the gym sizing wise. Um, you'll notice that the shape of the glove is very similar to winning, very close to it in terms of both the width and the height of the glove. Even the turned in thumb that starts off wider at the bottom and kind of rolls in and tapers at the top and is more rounded is just like the winning gloves as well. Um, the finger compartment as well, very similar to winning. So the width and the height is very similar. Again, I think they use that as a template. Uh, the cowhide leather on here is very nice quality, very thick. It has more of a satin finish to it and a smooth feel with a, with a slight texture, but nothing too grainy. It does say cream manufacturing and cursive on the back. You do have the segmented double cuff, just like winning with the the smaller segment up top and the larger piece at the bottom. You do have a rubberized cream patch that is square, that is raised letter in white right here. Um, it is kind of thick. So if I rub my hand across this, if you were to use this for sparring, I would say, I mean, it's not a sharp edge, but if you come in fast enough, you could probably possibly cut somebody or, or leave a scrape. So if you were to use these for sparring, I would definitely tape these over if you haven't already. You have about an inch in thickness on the back of the wrist support of a medium density foam. You also have this nice red polyester satin liner. On the inside, it does have this tag that says cream in gold. And on the back side of the tag, it says made in Thailand cowhide leather. Um, again, that satin liner is kind of like a cherry red. The inside of the wrist support is about three quarters of an inch of firm density foam on both sides. It says number one, 16 for the weight. You also have flat laces with plastic tips at the end. I feel like the laces are a bit short. I wish they were longer so I can get one more revolution. 
You do have double stitching, white piping, white piping around the thumb. You do have a nice firm grip bar that's medium in size. I wish it was a little bit larger, but the density is definitely there. No ventilated holes on the palm, nor do you have it on the thumb, as well as an attached thumb with a cream written horizontally across the finger uh, fingertip right there. Quality wise, these gloves are really solid. Are they as good as winning? I say that they're still a little bit, maybe a level down when it comes to winning. And the reason I say that is it just doesn't feel like the stitching is as clean and precise. Everything else about the glove, I love the leather on here. It's perfect, the piping is nice. Um, you know, the laces are laces. I wish they were a little bit longer. I think I'd say that the big issue here is going to be uh, this kind of just the stitching. I wouldn't say necessarily that it's messy stitching. The stitching is good. I'm just kind of, I guess I'm just trying to compare it to winning. I feel like winning has a larger stitch pattern and they're very precise with this. You can see they've done a good, really good job. It just doesn't feel as clean. The other thing that was off with this glove that winning does very well is the weight. These are advertised as 16 ounces. When I put them on the scale, they came in at 15 ounces. So they're one ounce underweight. Um, definitely need to fix that, especially for the price that they're asking for this glove. And especially if you're trying to use, I guess, winning as the benchmark. To me, winnings, the least the ones I've had, have always been on point when it comes to weight. In terms of the weight though, the distribution of the weight is done very nicely. So you can see I can hold the back and the front of the glove and have no issues with the glove being too top heavy or too um, too much weight towards the front of the glove. The leather on here looks really good. You can see the stitching where the back of the thumb meets the back of the hand looks really clean. Where the thumb meets the index finger. On the palm side, the double stitching looks really good. One other thing I did notice too is if you'll notice and hopefully the camera can capture it, there's a little bit of red right here and I can't tell if that's thread or if that's like a piece of liner that got caught right here on this piping. And it is, you know, a piece of cloth or a thread because it's very small, but I can't get it out and it's, it's not dye. And what I'm thinking is maybe like a piece fell in here and they were just stitching and rather than just pulling that little piece of red, whatever it is out, they just kept on going. And it's just aesthetic. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect the quality or the dur durability of the glove but it's only on my left glove. My right glove doesn't have it, but there is a piece of thread that just kind of is sticking right there. And again, I'm not sure how that happened. And it's not definitely not from the thread for the stitching because the thread for the stitching is white. It's not red. So something got caught here and they just kind of kept on going. So I, I'm not too sure what's going on there or if the liner got caught inside here and it kind of overextended into the, into the piping. I'm not too sure, but just something I, I noticed. But the stitching, other than that, looks really good. All symmetrical, nice and straight where the thumb is. You know, the bottom looks good. The liner is really nice and clean. The outside edges look really good throughout the entire glove. And I'll let you guys see it from that side. So overall, a very clean glove. Comfort-wise, I my hand to the glove. Liner feels really good. Nice and smooth throughout. No bunching up in the fingertips. Back of hand towards the wrist or on the palm side. Wrist support feels really good, nice and comfortable. Um, the glove, I'd say it's medium when it comes to broken in this. It's not a super soft glove where you can just open and close your, your palm right away. It's gonna take a little bit of time to break in, but they're not ultra stiff either. I'd say that they're pretty much right in the middle. The more you use these gloves, that latex foam is really gonna soften up a little bit more and give you that flexibility you're looking for to really open and close your palm. You can see mine opens and closes real nice now, but it's taking a little bit of time to really break these gloves in. Thumb, I know that's a big one for you guys, big one for me. Piping right here on the fat part feels really good, feels comfortable. Um, I don't foresee this being an issue. I've broken in mine nicely. Uh, the actual placement and the shape of the thumb is good as well. So. Nice amount of depth. I don't feel like my thumb jams at all. You can see I can close my hand and it doesn't pull down on the tip of the thumb. So the attached thumb does its job by now allowing the, the thumb to flare out, but it's also not pulling down on the thumb to where I feel like my thumb jams into that. But the actual positioning of it is perfect. And again, you can see that they've done a really good job of replicating that winning style thumb with it starting a little bit kind of thicker at the bottom and then kind of narrowing at the top and rounding out. And you can see it kind of turns in. Finger compartment. I say is medium in depth. It's not the most deep finger compartment. It's not, also not super shallow. You do have a secondary grip bar. It feels like a rolled piece of leather that's covered with lining right here on the finger compartment together with your grip bar down here. I'd say that the, the room in the, inside of the finger compartment is perfect in terms of width. 
uh, not too wide, not too narrow. I don't feel like my, my fingers shift around too much and I also don't feel like my fingers are rubbing against each other to where you end up getting blisters between your fingers. So in terms of the width of the finger compartment, that feels really good. And again, the liner feels good throughout the entire hand compartment. Wish there was ventilated holes to give yourself a little bit of breathability with this glove. Maybe later down the road, if they do make another version of this glove, they can implement that. But overall, a very comfortable glove and even more comfortable once you soften these up and break them in. Um, protection and performance, to me, this is where this glove really shines. So they essentially use a layered latex foam padding on here. Once you really soften this up, I know a lot of people will say like winnings are like pillows. At least that's what they use to compare it. I would say that this padding on here is very similar in terms of the density to winning and how when you push down, down on it, how it firms up the, the further you go in. So you could definitely land on those two front knuckles right here. The, that surface kind of flattens out, but you also get a good amount of shock absorption. I also feel like the padding on here for the equivalent size to the winning, the 16 ounce winning is not as thick. I feel like this one's a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say, I guess thinner, but that doesn't take away from the performance of the glove. It just doesn't feel as thick uh, as the winning. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. I feel like this does a really good job of replicating the performance of the padding in winnings. So you get good feedback and you get that good pop that you're looking for. And it just gives a nice bang. Good shock absorption as well. And I feel it feels really good. I feel pretty confident that I can use these gloves and really dig in with shots and not be afraid to do any damage to my knuckles or to my wrist and my hand. So overall, I feel like to me, the padding is really one of the biggest bright spots with this glove, all things considered. Cost wise, the glove costs $250 on the Combat Corner website. They also have a headgear. Uh, I believe they also have a groin protector as well. That is the Cream TJ1 uh, uh, model lineup. Um, hopefully I get to try those out later down the road. Um, but for $250, I actually think this is a, a really solid glove. And the reason I say that is, you know, you kind of, there's a couple things you want to compare, right? You want to compare it to winnings. Winnings right now, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars just depending on which color you get, what size. There's so many variables and there's so many different companies that sell winnings. It's really hard to say what the definitive market price on winnings are. But for the sake of averaging out, you're looking at probably like four, four hundred fifty bucks, right? For a pair of winnings. Uh, depending on where you're getting it from, all that being said, there's a lot of fakes out there too on eBay, so you got to watch out for that. Um, so all things considered, you know, for $250, a Thai-made glove, you know, they're not made in Pakistan, they're not made in China, they're made in Thailand. Really nice quality leather, very comfortable once you, especially once you break them in. The padding is, is awesome on these. Um, I would say the main drawback is going to be the weight being off by one ounce, and then just sizing and color variety. I think they need to come out with a couple more sizes and, and more colorways and I think that would make this glove more attractive because I personally love white but not a lot of people like a white glove. Some people like other colorways so I think if they'd made these in other colors that would be a big game changer for this particular model of glove but I think they've done a really good job and gotten pretty close to making a good winning clone with a couple small differences but pretty darn close. I mean a lot of you guys will be saying well are, they, are these going to be better than the C-17s and um, you know, the, uh, what are those other ones? The, the punch equipment Fuertes, or I forgot the other ones. There's so many now. Um, I would say that these are up there. These are probably, you know, top two or three in terms of clones. I would really have to sit down and put them side by side to really kind of rank them, but they're definitely an awesome Japanese inspired glove. I'd say that the advantage these has is going to be the quality that, that thicker leather. And they've done a really good job of replicating the padding style that you get in the uh, winning boxing glove, as well as the shape of the glove. I mean, they look, it's funny if you were to take the, the label off this glove and you put two winnings, the winning and this one next to each other, um, they would be pretty similar to each other. Now the stitching will probably stand out a little bit, but outside of that, um, they look really, really similar. So thoroughly impressed. If you guys have any questions or comments, you guys know what to do, put them down below. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find these Combat Corner Cream TG1 boxing gloves. See you guys later. Peace.